Okay, I accidentally closed QuickTime Player and quit that recording, which was getting too long anyway. Let's try doing a simple example in Final Cut Pro. I'll show you the tiny little bit I know, but like I said, it's enough. So I create a new event, and I'll call this PL Series uh, what is it? 0022 or something. Fine. Create a new event. Okay, now import media. Okay, so we gotta got to uh, find the media. Which one is it? Let's see which one. Mm. Okay, 3.03 p.m., that's it. So let me drag this in. You can see I'm still not a star at this, but it doesn't matter, I can get it done. All right, so here we have the screen recording for our new event. And now I'm gonna click on that, I'm gonna do new project. Why it's set up this way, I couldn't tell you. PL series, I guess, you know, you can have multiple clips in a project. I may have done that a little bit, but like I said, I don't really know it that well. What I do know is better double click on the project to make sure that the clip down here is the right clip. Otherwise you might accidentally edit a clip from the wrong project. That's happened to me a bunch of times. All right, so now I'm gonna come down here to my editing window and there are two things I'm gonna add. Um, so I've got it set up so I can see the effects and I can also see sort of like the audio timeline. Um, this actually, this is great because we're gonna edit the video that I just recorded. <laughs> this is great. So this is real. This actually is PL series 20, oh, maybe it's 21. Whatever, it's 22 now. Um, okay, so what we're gonna do is we're going to get the levels, we're gonna get the limiter, and we're gonna drag that over the clip. And then we're also gonna take, I have this YouTube loudness meter two, which is some sort of like, I don't know, shareware-ish uh, thing or, you know, where, where you like unlock the features by paying, which I haven't paid, but the free version of it's fine for what I'm doing. And I'll show you how these work. So so the, the bottom line problem is that with that dynamic mic, even with the 36 dB gain setting that I have in the software, it's still way, way, way too quiet. Okay, so if I upload this to, to YouTube, it's gonna, the video will audio, the audio for the video will sound way quieter than a normal YouTube video. So we're going to boost the gain. And here's how we're gonna do it. And I watched the video that shows how to do this. I'm just taking the, the cues from one of the YouTube videos I found. Uh, here, I'm gonna turn this to legacy. I don't even know what half these things do. We're gonna make the release be 250 milliseconds. No idea what that does. I don't know if any of this matters, actually. Output level minus 1.7 dB. So when you finish one of these videos, processing it and uploading it to YouTube, YouTube is going to I guess there's like a compression thing. And so there's this idea of headroom. So we're going to try to make the video have a loudness, an average loudness of minus 17 LUFS, LUFS, which are loudness units. Okay, that's, that's a way that, uh, it's not like the absolute volume of it or the absolute loudness of it. It's like how the human ear perceives over time. There's a whole bunch of videos on it. Okay, but that's what we're gonna try to do. And we wanna make sure at the same time that we're not exceeding, um, you know, we're, we're not like hitting the max loudness, okay? We don't want clipping, we don't want the voice to be cut off and sound all metallic or robotic. So you know, this gives us a little bit of headroom. And then the gain is what we're gonna change and update. So let's try this without gain. So here the, here's this uh, YouTube meter thingy uh, I'm not even sure if I ran it on this clip, but I see it probably is this clip. So you can see it's minus 21.6 LUFs. So that's like in decibels. Um, so minus 21.6 dBs. And we, we actually want it to be minus 17. If your audio is louder than minus 14 LUFs, 
then YouTube will automatically reduce the loudness. But if your video is quiet, YouTube won't boost it automatically. So if you have a, if, if, uh, if I just upload this video as is, you'd be able to hear it, but you'd have to turn up the volume on your laptop really loud. And then the next time you listen to a YouTube video, it'd blast your ears. So we're gonna try to get to minus 17 or minus 16 is also a reasonable um, number, but you know some people say minus 17 for spoken voice. So let's let's go for minus 17. That's what I've been trying to do for the other videos. It doesn't matter if it's exactly minus 17, but you know I don't want it to be minus 14 or minus uh, 15. That's, that would be too loud, at least for what I'm doing. So I am gonna start with, um, let's say 12 dB gain, okay? And this is a limiter, so in addition to giving gain, um, also it should have the effect of um, trying to avoid, you know, going to um, clipping, uh, that kind of thing. Alrighty, so uh, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna click here and reset everything. Let's sort of start in the middle of this video. I'm just gonna play it. Okay, so after a few seconds, the integrated loudness is, you know, a tad under minus 16. So I'll let it play for a few more seconds uh, because this number will will vary quite a bit. Maybe I'll let it play for like 10 or 15 seconds. Let's just see how it goes. But it sounds like my gain's a little too high. Okay, so it looks like I'm probably about um, one dB, a little, uh, one dB hot. So let's go back down to a gain of a plus 11. And thinking about plus and minus for this and the, and the dBs and the decibels, like at this point, I've got that uh, enough that it doesn't bother me. Okay, so here we are in a quieter stretch. So, you know, I'm a little quiet instead of a little hot. Let me play it. A little bit. Actually, let me just, you know, I, I tend to go to a random spot because if I just play it from the beginning, often my voice starts out at a different level. You know, maybe I'm a little quiet or a little loud in the beginning, so. All right. I'm going to call this okay. All right. So we're we're somewhere around the the magic number of minus 17. So that's good enough. And uh, by the way, there's an order to which these filters or, or effects get processed. They get filtered from, uh, they happen from top to bound, top to bottom. So the limiter under the effects has to come before the YouTube loudness meter, or you're going to pick up the un, unboosted uh, loudness. All right, so we're done with that. We've we've basically figured out what the gain should be. Um, we set the headroom for the limiter. And so now I'm gonna select a clip and I'm gonna create a new compound clip. Now, if you have multiple clips together you're editing, this is probably more important, but that's how apparently how you do it. Uh, okay, so let me make sure I clicked on the series, clicked on the compound clip, all right. Uh, I want to make sure I'm dealing with the right clip because that was one of the failure modes when I was in the wrong project or had the wrong clip. So now, with that clip um, selected, we are going to export. This took me a while also. So we're going to export to file because it's all set up. So Apple wants you to export to their devices. And yeah, forget that. Just export to a file. Okay, so here's my setup. Multi-pass versus single pass for the, the codec. Probably I get away with single pass and maybe I'll switch that because this export takes a long time. And so do I really need like the ultra high quality? I don't know. 
Uh, and then there's the resolution. And when you set up these projects, by the way, you can choose the resolution. Um, so I'm just doing 1920 by 10, 1080. Uh, and also, I don't know if I did this. Actually, before I export it, let, let me see if I check. Like, let's see. So if I if I look at my project, is there a way to say? So I want it to be at 30 frames per second, I believe, uh, for the YouTube video. I forget if I changed that, right? So there are also like templates and all that. I don't know how to do all this stuff, okay? I barely know what I'm doing. But I mean, yeah, here you could see like the resolution of the screen recording was way higher. It was 3584 by 2240. So this is like super high resolution. And so I'm definitely downsizing it. Um, I don't know if I have to do all this processing, by the way. If, if, if I had a separate interface, maybe I could get away without doing this. Uh, well, I don't know if I did 30 frames per second or not, but let's just go with it. So let's uh, select a clip. Great. Let's export to file. Settings. Okay, we'll do the multi-pass. I don't know if that's good or bad. I guess it's good, but it takes a long time. Oh, look at this. 29.98 frames per Okay, so I didn't choose 30 frames per second. All right, so we're going to we're going to change something. We're going to change something. It's okay. It's okay. All right. The thing to remember, here's the important thing to remember so it doesn't take us a long time to do it again. So, that's fine. It's fine. So, if we go here, uh to the project, and then we go to the clip. Where's my editing? Where's my like special effects? Yeah. Yeah. Oh well. All right. Well, I don't really know what I'm doing, so let's see. Let's uh. Let us delete the project. Hmm. And move to trash. Okay, so the project's gone, and let's move that clip to trash also. All right. So this is why it's important to do things a lot of times. Uh, all right, so what I want to do so I want to create a new project, PL series 0022, and we want it to be 30 frames per second. Okay, that's the ticket. All right, great. Um, and we've got the project selected. We have the screen recording. All right, I don't see any of the special effects. So let's try it again. So w the main thing is we roughly know what the gain is. So, so that's fine. Okay, so here we got the YouTube loudness meter and let's do the levels again. All right, no problem. Remember, levels have to come before the loudness meter. No problem. All right, open up levels open up the loudness meter all right legacy on 250 minus one seven great gain uh, what did what did we pick we picked something like 11 i don't know something like that and then uh, let's reset the loudness. Dive in. All right, I'm gonna say it's good enough. Might be a little hot, might be a little, little quiet. Doesn't matter, it's okay. Good enough. So now what we're gonna do, okay, so we're gonna select, do it again. Select the project. Come on. Select the clip. Select it all. New compound clip. 
All right. Okay. All right. Export. We're going to export to file. Like my computer is running super slow now. <laughs> All right. Export file. My poor computer. Okay. Multi pass. I'll just shove it in here for right now. Okay. Save it. And then this is going to take a while to process. Yeah, there we go. All right. So that's software. Um, as you can see, I know how to use maybe 1% of Final Cut Pro, if that. But it's enough to make videos in that Special Forces TV show that's kind of ridiculous. Um, that my brother showed me, this instructor, DS Billy, says, I want solutions, not excuses, right? So uh, that's kind of my attitude. It's like, okay, I don't really know how to use the software, but I really want to make a video. Mm, I'll figure it out. I'll watch some YouTube videos. I'll fumble around. I don't have to know how to use everything. I don't, know how to, I don't have to know how to use org mode to use a little Emacs, for example. It's fine. Um and another thing is if, if I'm fumbling around with the editing and playing around with transitions and making fancy intros and laying down music tracks and all that, that's time where I'm not making videos. And if I want to make 1,024, I just got to hop to it. Okay. So maybe over time I'll play around with some of these other things, but I think my style is just one of, of keeping simple. I don't think it's minimalism. It's just I want to keep it simple and reliable and not have a whole lot get in the way and go at it. Uh, and it's similar to rule number three from Heinlein about writing. You must refrain from rewriting except to editorial order. That's it. You know, I'm not going to sit here and edit these videos. I'm doing this in one take. You know, you saw me fumbling around. Well, that's reality. I'm trying to show you what it's really like for me. Um, and I made a mistake and you saw what the mistake looks like. I'm somewhat tempted to redo the video, but I'm not going to because, you know, it's about learning, you know, how how to get something done. It doesn't have to be perfect. And, uh, and it's learning about the failure modes, too. You should have seen me the first time I used Final Cut Pro is all I can say. Um, once again, I think style emerges from these choices. So keeping things simple and reliable. Uh, there's an amazing YouTube creator, True Cuckoo, who makes music videos, and, and it's awesome watching his production because uh, he has got a bunch of techniques, some of which are very, very simple that he uses that are, you know, once you watch, it's like, oh, yeah, that's brilliant. Okay, so I, I like watching that. Um, okay, and high-level thoughts, you get much faster, much, much faster when you make a lot of videos. Uh, the factory mindset I was talking about. Okay, the customer needs a kilo tube of videos by the end of the year. Um, so we just gotta gotta make them and not get stuck. So that's what, you know, I would have recorded this video 60 times in the past or 40 times in the past and to get everything exactly right in Final Cut Pro. But that's not what I'm trying to show anyway. I'm not trying to show you here, I'm the expert on Final Cut Pro. I'm trying to say, okay, if you don't know anything about Final Cut Pro and that's what you want to use to record some videos, let me show you the minimum thing you can do, as far as I can tell, that will allow you to process something to put it up on YouTube. Okay, that's took me a while to learn that. It took me like a week to learn what you just saw. Um, yeah, so if you do it a lot, you'll learn the failure mode. So, you know, that's a failure mode I know about is picking the wrong frame rate. So I'm going to have to learn, maybe there's like a template I can use to uh, make that the default. Right now it's not the default. So that's annoying. Um, learn how to streamline your production. Yep. So I've, I've removed a lot of things from my production. Learn how to record a video in 15 minutes. You know, if there's like a little break during your day between two calls. Okay, I got enough time. I can squeeze in a video. Speaking of which, I got a call in, in uh, was it 35 minutes? But that's enough time for me to edit this video using my amazing skills in Final Cut Pro. 
Maybe it'll only take me two attempts, but I'll get it edited. Um, and you learn how to do things in one take. You know, I, I saw an interview with Billy Moomy, who played Will Robinson, Lost in Space. That was my favorite TV show growing up. I mean, I wanted to be Will Robinson. Billy Moomy wanted to be Will Robinson. Everyone wanted to be Will Robinson. So, uh, but it, one of the things he said was that one reason that he got so much screen time and Jonathan Harris got so much screen time is that, you know, they, they hit their marks every time. Like the first time they did, they only, it was only required one take. And this was Ir Irwin Allen television. You know, everything's about money. Everything's about production time. You know, you got to do it once and then we got to, you know, we got to move on. Uh, I'm not saying that I hit all my marks in this video, but it was an honest video, right? As if, if I edited this video, it would not have been honest. Uh, that would not, but, and you saw, you saw exactly how I went about doing it. Um, so I'm getting to the point where I can do things in one take. Not well, but I will improve over time. Uh, the biggest time sink for me right now with my videos is that leveling that you just saw and the export. Given the resolution I'm recording the screen at, I might have to do that anyway. I probably have to do uh, the export. It's the export that takes the longest time. It's not not really the leveling. At this point, I can do leveling in like a minute. I can figure, you know, you just have to figure out what the setting is. But then the export was, is what takes a while. If I had a different computer, um, I guess I could do the export. But this export, you know, might take an hour, um, something like that. So it, you know, uh, and you, you can hear probably the fans are on. So probably not going to make a video while it's exporting. But that's okay. That gives me like a little break. So some of these things that maybe are a little annoying in some sense, well, probably okay. I mean, I want to listen to the video. Uh, I want to listen to the audio of my video. I like to look at it, look at it for a few minutes. So uh, sometimes I'll listen to the whole video. Sometimes it's like, nope, got to make another video. Just upload it. Time to move on. So um, maybe I could get the XLR inter uh, cables and the interface and not have to do the, the leveling step. You know, maybe if I set it up exactly right, I could I could tune it in and don't have to do that leveling step. So that might be something I'd consider in the future. Um, but like I said, the the little bit of inefficiency there of me listening to it is probably good anyway. It's probably good that I'm listening to, to what I'm doing and saying a little bit or sometimes listen to the whole video. Uh, so... I'm not sure. I don't. I don't know that anything would actually get better if I went to this and never had to listen to the video or adjust it. So maybe, maybe that's the sort of uh, inefficiency that's actually a good inefficiency. But that's it. That's what I know about making these videos, other than just make them, make them, make them. Uh, and I'm. I am getting better over time. I learned how to do a higher resolution videos for the upload. I learned. Uh, how to improve my audio game a few different ways. Um, I learned that I don't want to have really fancy transitions and intros, so that kind of thing. I just want to keep it simple and reliable, which is just my style anyway. It's the same style as my talks. Like, hey, here's Emacs, let's go, right? So same thing for this, these talks. Um, that's it. I guess the only other thing I'd say is, yeah, it's a little annoying. You had to, you know, if you're going to make these sorts of things, or there is a little bit of annoyance, but, you know, you'll probably have to invest, you know, 15, 20 hours into it. That's the other thing, right? It's like if you're investing 20 hours into figuring out how to do all this stuff um, and you're making one video a year, Maybe it doesn't make sense, especially if you're making a five minute video and you invested 20, 20 hours in figuring out how to set up OBS and the microphone and all that so it sounds good. But if you're making a lot of videos, then 20 hours is no big deal, right? It's not, not that big a deal if you're going to make a lot of videos. So there's like this amortized cost that comes from just doing a lot of it. Uh, so that's the other thing is like, I don't, you know, when I was like, ah, I'll make a video a month or something. It's like, well, if I already spent 20 hours just figuring out how to do the microphone setup, then that's kind of, that's less enjoyable. 
But it's like, I'm going to make a thousand videos, right? And see, if I spend 20 hours figuring out how to do the audio for a thousand videos, that's okay. That's not a problem. Not a problem at all. All right. Well, maybe this will inspire you to try something yourself, or maybe it'll give you a couple, couple hints or a couple things that, you know, I didn't know when I started that maybe are useful. Um, so good luck uh, and have fun and hope, hope uh, you make some things. And if so, let me know. I'll check them out. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.